Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how I can make my hand disappear by using a real life invisibility cloak. So if you've ever seen Harry Potter, you might have dreamed about having an invisibility cloak just like he has in the movie. So let me show you how I built my real life cloaking device. It's called a Rochester cloak. First I'll explain how it works and then I'll show you it in action. Okay, so in order to make something invisible, it's obvious that we need to try to bend the light around the object so that it can't reach our eyes. But the problem with doing that is usually when we try to bend the light from an object, it bends the background object light also, and so we can tell there's something blocking it. For example, this lens here can block the light from my finger in the back. But you can tell there's something there because look at the background. See how the image is flipped and distorted? So you know that there's a lens here and so that doesn't help block the object. You just know that there's a lens blocking it. But what if you could combine lenses in such a way so that you bend the light around the object you want to cloak but you don't bend the light from the background? Okay, so in order to get this to work, you, you can't just use one lens or two or three, but you have to use four lenses and you just set them up according to this equation and their focal points. So you keep these two lenses, these big ones we'll call F2 and these small ones we'll call F1, but there will be a point between these two lenses where something is invisible except for in the very center of it. Here's what I mean. Okay, so let me show you what happens here. So first the light is coming in parallel and then it goes through this first lens and it converges into one focal point here and then it keeps diverging and hits the second lens. So this focal point is the, our invisibility point. So everything's invisible except right at the center there. But then as you keep going, in order for the background to not look distorted, you have to recorrect the light that you made diverge right there. But the problem is, is that the image is now flipped 180 degrees. And so you have to flip it back. So then it goes through these next two lenses to straighten out the light and flip the image so that the background looks completely normal. So notice when I set these four lenses up at the correct lengths, it keeps the background intact. So you can see the rod going down to a distance and it doesn't really look like anything's weird with it. It looks like maybe a little distortion. So you can see on the lines in the background, they stay about the same whether they're behind the lenses or not. And so this is the important point and difficult part of making a cloaking device. You have to not interrupt the background. And just with these four lenses here, it does a pretty good job at not interrupting the background. Okay, so no tricks going on. Here's the back of this. There's nothing in between blocking it. But look what happens when I put it about right here. Whoa. So here's the background, you can see no tricks here. I say the magic words, bippity, boppity, boop, and it becomes invisible. Okay, so watch as I dangle something in front of the lens, how it just disappears. So this is a really cool way to make something invisible using lenses. Basically, if you just had a window with those lenses looking into the outside, you'd be able to pass stuff by the window if, as long as you didn't pass the very center of the window and people looking out the window wouldn't even notice. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. I'm almost to a million subscribers. Let's help me get there. I know we can do it. If you have any comments or questions about this video, let me know in the comment section. I'll try to get to them. Also, if you have any suggestions that you want to see me try, let me know and I'll try to get to those too. And I'll see you next time.